And these are how big the balls are at this point. It's very hard to hold five at one time. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and I am a knitter and military spouse living in Denver, Colorado with my family. Today's video is episode 33 of my podcast where I share with you guys what I'm knitting on, what's bringing me inspiration, and just how knitting and fiber crafts have interwoven into my life. If you'd like to find me other places, I'm Do So Knits basically everywhere, Instagram, YouTube, and Ravelry. And then in addition, the show notes are linked down in the description box below where I will link to patterns. I do timestamps of the project so that way you can scroll back easier to find specific patterns if you need to. It's all down there linked in the description box. So I'm sitting in a slightly different spot, but also not that different. Typically, I've been recording these sitting on the couch right behind me. Um, but this morning, I just kind of thought I wanted to sit on the ground, prop my camera on the coffee table. And um, I mean, Sherlock looks so cute right there and he's sleeping. So I didn't want to disturb him. <laughs> And sometimes I tend to shuffle around a bit on the couch, so we're trying the ground sitting. And you know, sometimes the extra just foundation of the ground is nice. So slightly different, but basically the same. On the back of my couch is my shawlography shawl. I knitted it in Holstgarn Super Soft in five different colors. The colors are linked on my project page. It just kind of lives there. I think it looks really nice. It goes really well with the colors in my living room, as you can see by my other kind of pillow sitting here. And it's good to have there for a blanket or to throw on if I need it. And last thing I'll say before we kind of move into some other things. I am wearing today my shirt number one. This was the very first garment I sewed. It is a pattern by Sonia Phillips. It's really easy and I knit it in a linen rayon blend called Brussels Washer and it's just a really simple t-shirt and I just I am feeling all the cozy vibes today. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a cup of something. I'm finishing up my second cup of coffee and also holding it so I can feel the warmth. So I hope you have something, and let's dive into what's been going on, what I've been knitting on. Actually, before we get into the knitting, I do have a couple of admin things I do want to mention here right quick. If you don't want to listen to it, feel free to find the timestamp down below to skip ahead to the knitting. It'll all be linked real easy down there as chapters or bookmarks, I believe, for YouTube, and you can just skip. So right now i am hosting the spring make along that i am hosting it is called the do so spring mal 22 that is the hashtag you can use on instagram basically i'm just asking you to endeavor to take your making outside of your home so any making that you do at the park it, at the gas station, in the car, at a coffee shop, it all counts. Just snap a picture, make sure you have a public Instagram account and use the hashtag to be entered. I've been sharing them periodically as they come in and I'm really loving seeing what you guys make. In addition, there is a Discord channel which is linked also down below if you'd like to join and just chat with other people in real time about what you're making and sharing what you're doing. It's been real fun. Thank you guys for joining. And it runs the entirety of spring. So it goes until June 21st, I believe. I will link down below also to the Instagram post, which is saved in my highlights about the make along. And I hope you guys join. It's been really fun so far. Just to keep us motivated and to enjoy the weather outside as it's getting better. Hopefully. Although Denver's been kind of funny. Yesterday we had periods of snow and it was pretty cold and today it's supposed to be 20 degrees warmer and 60 so I really don't know what to expect <laughs> most days because the weather it's that is it spring type of weather that we're having so it's all been good. I also just wanted to say thank you guys so much. I've seen all the new subscribers come by. I know I was mentioned on the Little Big Knits podcast. Thank you so much for that. 
you guys, I just can't even put into words how much you guys are supporting me and how it makes me feel. I just started this as a way to just kind of share and talk about my knitting. Um, and it really means a lot that I have you guys that like to listen. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming over and subscribing if you have or if you've been a subscriber from the very beginning. It really means so much. I'm definitely planning once we hit the 1000 mark to hopefully do another giveaway. So if you're not subscribed and you'd like to, please feel free to. It's just a free way to support us and to help us find other knitters. And it's just been a lot of fun. And I want to say thank you guys so much. I really love you all. And finally, the last admin thing. I had a giveaway in episode 30 and I have not heard back from the winner. So I have pulled a new winner today. So the I used a random comment generator from episode 30. And our winner is Kathy Green. Her comment was, congratulations on 700 plus subscribers. You deserve it. I really enjoy watching you talk about your knitting and life. I've mostly been working on socks, but making a sweater for my husband that he doesn't know about. He travels a lot and I work on it when he's gone. So Kathy, please make sure to send me an email at dosoknits at gmail.com. It's linked in the description box below. Basically everything's down in the description box. I've said that a lot today. Please send me an email and I will get the prize out to you. It was this pack of row one minis. It's sitting here. It's ready to have a new home. So that's all the admin stuff. Thank you guys for sitting through that. And now we can dive into some knitting. So since the last podcast, it was a couple weeks ago, I think we have a little extra week between because of my stash in and out video. I've finished quite a bit of socks. Some of them were lingering a while. Some of them was a secret, so I couldn't tell you about them. Um, but yeah, so let's see what we finished. So we have a bit of a sock parade coming up. So the first thing I finished were my March, right, because we're in April, March Desa Vista Dye Work socks. I opted to do two shorties because that is one of the options for the knit along. It is a year long knit along. So I did two shorties, one for me, which is this pair, and then a pair for my mom because Shane thought the colors were too bright for him. So I will show you on these. Basically, both sets of socks are exactly the same minus the stitch count. I do 56 stitches for myself and I did 60 for my mom. And then the foot length. Her foot is longer than my foot. So I just do the foot length based on obviously the recipient's foot. So for these socks, I did about eight rounds for the cuff. I did these on nine inch circular needles US zero two millimeters. And then for these, I did a German short row heel with a mini heel flap adjustment, which is a technique that I use from Nina Phillips. It's in her Nina's Vanilla Sock Recipe. I love this heel because it's quick, but it also helps raise up the arch just a little bit. And I think for a shorty sock, that little bit of extra length in the back definitely helps raise the back of the sock just a bit. If I didn't do the mini heel flap, I'd probably do another color of this before doing a German short row heel. Um, and then you just decrease them out like a mini gusset and then I knit the length and then a round toe at the end, which I take from Hugo Canyon's patterns. So I have finished these two pairs for myself and my mom and now I can wear these. I'm definitely needing to make more shorty socks as the weather is warming up because I don't have enough to wear you know when I start wearing dresses and I don't know if I want to wear long socks so I need some more short ones so I'm glad these ones are going into my drawer and this double shorty pairing for the knit along from Desert Vista Dye Works is probably going to be sticking around. I think this length will be really nice. I've tried it on. I have not woven the ends in on this sock. And I think it hits like right below my ankle. It's definitely a short sock, like almost a no-share sock, which is kind of what I want. So I think it'll be really good. It's a like a 
finger width from the bottom of my ankle bone, but I think still high enough in the back to compensate to like not have your foot rub against your socks. So yeah, those are those. Those are done. I then also finished a pair of socks for Shane. These are not on blockers, I apologize. So these are DK socks, which I knit for him out of Knit Picks Felici. Felici is a fingering weight self-striping yarn, and what I did is I just held each end of the skein to marl them together. I followed Kay Litton's DK sock pattern. I did the medium size. I did 10 rounds for the cuff. And then again, I just did a German short row heel instead of a heel flap and gusset. Knit to the length we needed. And then for these, I did the wedge toe, which is in Kay's pattern. I really like how these have marled and striped up. I think they look really interesting and fun. It was quick when I actually was working on these. Mostly they were kind of sitting it on my computer desk for when I was like editing or doing things at my computer that I didn't necessarily like need my hands for or like I was just watching something, which honestly doesn't happen too often, minus when I'm editing a podcast or doing some other work things. So these kind of lingered for a bit, but they're done now. They're definitely thick and sturdy and probably will be good for hiking or in the winter. I don't think he'll probably wear them for a little while, but that's fine. They're finished now. I'm pretty sure I started these in December. I also left on here the little stitch marker that I've been using for Shane socks. It is a little ramen bowl from Simply Surfing. It's such a good weight. And like, look at this bowl, so good. So, this will go on to his next pair of socks. And then, keeping with some finished socks, these are the ones that I've actually been working on in a couple podcasts, and I just haven't shown you guys. I started these in March, and they are now finished. But these are the Into the Garden socks by Hugga Canyon. I was test knitting these for her, but the pattern is now out, and I can show you guys. So these are my socks. So this is a sock set from To The Max Yarn Co, which is now Frankie Gray Fibers. It is, this is Vineyard and a mini that came with it. It is a superwash merino and nylon blend. I want to say it's 80-20. I'm not exactly sure. But this pattern has this really cute little brick pattern and flowers to represent the brick wall, flowers, and the path in the secret garden. And then you do a nice textured heel flap and then knit your foot like normal. I really love how these colors worked up. I love this main color so much. I think the vineyard theme for a garden is just really, really nice. And this purple is just gorgeous. I want to say, I can let you know, I used 54 grams of the main color and I used 14 grams of my mini for this pattern. And it'd be really nice too. You could even do a color here with a different color here for the stripe. And you could even throw in a contrast heel here. There's so many options and it's just really, really nice. I loved working with this yarn. It's really shiny and it just like slides off really nicely. Just overall a really fun pattern. I really, I've said it before, I really love Hugga Canyon's patterns because it's usually some sort of interest at the beginning with a motif or pattern um, that's like on the leg and then you have a really like basic vanilla sock after or it'll be like an interest here, an interest here and then kind of vanilla in between. And even when her patterns are patterned all over, I find them very easy to memorize and just little more brain power than vanilla socks, but also like still good mindless knitting with a little bit of brain power, if that makes sense. You can still take them with you and knit on them, but 
also just feel like you have a little more interest going on. I love them. I love her patterns. Okay, and then the last thing I have for finished objects is, isn't really a finished object, but I do think it's kind of cool and I wanted to share it. I mended a sock for Shane, and this is what it looks like. So this little hole that he wore, he wore these socks hiking and just wore a hole into the bottom of the heel flap, which I think is partially my fault because I am I got this mini from my friend Courtney, and I'm pretty sure it's just the singles. Um, so that's why it wore through so quickly. <laughs> but what I did is I did a knitted patch because of where this is, I thought it might be kind of difficult to, you know, I don't know. It was a weird place to like do the weaving thing because I can't really get a whole square and I didn't want a duplicate stitch. But this technique is really cool because you can knit a square patch. You just go and you kind of pick up stitches and then knit up while also anchoring into the sides. But then what I was able to do is I was just able to follow the decreases of the heel flap. So like when I was running out of space here, I just knit two together or purled two together depending on which side I was on. And then I could just keep knitting back and forth to kind of follow this edge. And then at the top, you just graft them together. I followed a video, video tutorial. I will link to it in the description box. But I really like how, I like how the patches look. I like that it's like a pop of color and it really secures, I think your fraying ends in. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So now we have a double layer. Uh, this is where the hole was and the patch is all the way around it. And you can see here where you go and you pick it up and secure it on each end, and then those are my ends. And yeah, you can see, so even if this frays a bit more, there's the extra patch underneath. So it's like a double layer now. And I had Shane try it on, and he said he couldn't even feel it. So, hopefully that'll just kind of felt into the rest. And I like the little pop of color. I'm pretty sure this probably, it only used so I did about a yard, so three feet of, of of an initial string and then another probably yard, so like two yards of leftovers. So you could probably only need like one to two grams to able to mend socks. So if you wanted to know what to do with those tiny itty bitty scraps, there you go. You can mend some socks when they break. I do have another sock that I need to mend for myself that I haven't done yet. I was testing it on his sock first. Cause that's how it goes, he's the guinea pig. I also have a feeling that these socks are gonna probably need another mended hole in them just cause Shane is very hard on socks. And honestly, these are probably one of the first pairs that I knit him that he wears consistently. Um, the first two were like slightly too big so he doesn't wear them as often. And this is the first hole we've gotten after, what, two years maybe? So that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Okay. I think we can move into some works of progress. Do you think? Okay. I have a pile of works in progress just sitting here ready for you. I think I'm just going to work right to left because I think that's going to be easiest. The first thing I'm grabbing is in my Joy in the Stitches bag. This is my Birds of a Feather shawl by Andrea Mowry. This has been on my needles for a very long time, but I'm really motivated to get it off the needles for a couple reasons. One, it's warming up and I'd like to get it done. Two, I believe Needles at the Ready is having a shawl it off and a spring cleaning. So I can double dip into both of those to finish this if I finish it by the end of the month. So here is where my shawl is at. I was smart today and put these needle stoppers on from Coco Knits, which is very helpful. And here's my shawl. So it's an asymmetrical shawl where you increase 
with sections of garter and you have sections of lace until so you get your final stitch count and then you start shifting your stitches so that they all become to one side the last time I showed it I was here where this little ghost is I have switched out the markers to this little ghost because I think he's adorable and fits really well with the white shawl theme I think I am about halfway through this mohair section and then I think I have three sections to go so not too bad I honestly haven't been working on it too much within the last week, but I have worked on it a bit since the last podcast. I am using a Merino Singles for this main color. It is Olan Singles in the colorway Veil. And then this mohair color is by Lena Grossa. It's Bridget number three it's a wool mohair and nylon blend so you alternate the sections of your mohair and singles or fingering weight and just makes this really like airy pretty shawl so i just need to work on this a bit more i think I don't know. I'm really excited for it. I love wearing shawls. I wear them all the time. I just need more hours in the day. Maybe I should move this to my 30 minutes in the morning. I've just moved another project there. So I don't know. But I definitely want to get it done by the end of the month. So maybe I just need to take this with me more often. But I'm really enjoying it. It's really easy at this point. You really don't have to focus in the garter sections because it's just knitting every round and then some increases or decreases on the ends. It's very easy. I only had to focus during the lace sections, which I still have a little bit to go before I get to one of those. Kind of moving to what has been going in my 30 minutes in the morning. I've been still working on my stratified sweater by Tiff Nealon. It's in the worsted book by Amy of Lobby Enemy and I'm on Sleeve Island. So I was on this sleeve last time. I was here. And then it sat for a bit and I have finished this sleeve. It's got a two by one twisted cuff. And I am now working on the second sleeve. So I'm on this brown stripe and I'll have that many more to go. Yeah, um, this pattern is size inclusive. I am using a US 6 for my main needle and a US 4 for the other needle. I am using Retro Zaria by Roa yarn. Here it is in a cake still. By Roa. It's 100% Portuguese wool. It is a worsted weight yarn. I am using five different colors that I very much apologize. I do not know the names of them but they are linked on my project page so this is how they look I really love this sweater and I know you're probably tired of seeing it because I've been working on it for a very long time I have done a fit check I've put this on my knitting barber cords at the bottom tried it on I do think I'm going to have to lengthen the body it's just too cropped too cropped for me to be able to wear functionally so I think maybe a couple more inches maybe because I've just done this long stripe here at the brown so maybe after the long stripe if I do these two stripes before the eyelet row maybe that'll be long enough and then I can do the bottom ribbing we shall see I do have enough yarn um, to knit either the long or cropped version of the sweater it's one skein of each of the colors except for your first two where you grab two skeins so i do have enough so i'm not worried about running out i still have i'm still on my first skein of every color and these are how big the balls are at this point it's very hard to hold five at one time this is how many oh, ignore this little pink blip 
this orange yellow one is the one that's running out the most, which is why I have the second skein in here. So they're all still pretty decently sized. So I'm not super worried about running out at this point. Um, the second sleeve is always easier than the second sleeve, do you guys think? I think so. I feel like I can just go <laughs> versus having to, I don't know, I still have to count to count my decrease rows, but I don't know, there's something about it to where I don't have to like stop and measure and all these things. It's just there. So I am very excited to wear this and to have it done. I've tried it on. It looks really good. I think the sleeves are a little baggy -er than I thought I would want, but I do like them. Um, they're just a little looser than some of my other sleeves on other sweaters, but I think it'll be nice for layering that it's a little bit looser in the sleeves versus being a little tighter. And yeah, I've talked about it before. I really love the yarn. It's really lightweight. It's definitely earthy and grassy and wooly. There are literally pieces of grass kind of stuck in here. And the body was so fast to do because each section has like a different stitch pattern and the stripes are just really fun to like keep you motivated and going. So I'm actually kind of excited to knit a few more stripes on the body. And it's just so lightweight. This thing weighs nothing compared to some other sweaters that are real heavy. This one's really, really nice. So yeah. Basically all these projects I just want done by the end of the month. I probably said that last month too. So <laughs> staying on the sweater train. This is living in my stolen minutes bag. It's these teacup cats. I love this bag so much. It's our sweater size bag. I've started the Montrealer by Designs by Dells for my husband Shane. I know I should have waited to start a new sweater until I finished my first sweater, but I was just really craving a new sweater and I didn't think I should deny myself because I really wanted it. I was actually gonna swatch for a sweater for myself, but didn't have the right needles, which has been resolved. But I was like, I really just wanna start a sweater. And I had swatched for this, I knew the gauge. So I have started this for my husband, Shane. I am almost done with the raglan increases. I am so close. So I think I have like, six more rounds before the first, all the raglans are done and then I can split for the sleeves and then we'll just be gliding by. I believe I'm knitting the size 44 inch for my husband. It might be a 40 inch. I'm not exactly sure. I can check my project page. I am knitting the size 44 inch for Shane. I'm using Knit Picks All of the Andes Non Superwash. This color is Cobblestone Heather. And then the stripe color I am using is Dove Heather, which is the background color that I used for my um, sweater that I test knit for Samantha Guru that I cannot remember the name of right now. I can only remember the one I just knit and it's not that one. But I really like this color so we're doing two grays and then there's an accent stripe along the chest and we've decided to do this one which is Firecracker Heather. I love working with Wool of the Andes. It's just so good. It's spun really nicely. It's very consistent. I love that it's not super wash. I have so many good things to say about it. I love it so much. This sweater also has been going very, very well. You start with the provisional cast on, which is probably the main thing that I was like, Ugh, I don't want to do that, but I know it'll be so much better at the end. I've just been doing my increases. I have, here's the sleeve panel. The instructions are written very, very well about how to do dragless stripes, when to join them in, how many to do. I'm glad I've got the first stripe. I'm so excited to split for the sleeves and then just have the stripes to like keep me motivated because you just do 
you just go until the next stripe, which I love. And I know it'll feel so much faster once I split for the sleeves. I really love how the colors are looking. And I just wanted to get this started for Shane's birthday, which isn't until the summer. But I wanted to get it started just so it's on the needles and if I want to procrastinate and be a little slow with it, it's fine. I know there's going to be some new techniques with the pocket on the front and the hood. So I just wanted to give myself some extra time to do that, to dive in, to really enjoy. And once I split for the sleeves, it's just going to be like stocking it in the round with stripes to motivate me, which will be really, really fun. And once it's at that point, it'll be a little more um, accessible to take with me versus having to focus on like count rows and make sure I have the right number of stitches after the right number of increases and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm using my chow goo needles for that. I actually hit gauge with the recommended size. So it's a US seven that I'm knitting on four and a half millimeters. Yes. The next two things are socks because I always have socks, right? Um, I'm still working on my January Patreon socks from a homespun house. These have just been my, they live in my backpack, so they only get worked on when I get stuck, you know, waiting in a line somewhere, um, if Shane and I are driving somewhere and it's taking a bit longer, that kind of stuff is when I pull it out. I did a 20 round 2x2 two two cuff and a slip stitch heel flap with a garter edge. Who am I? I just wanted one. I have finally finished the gusset decreases and now I'm just on the normal foot. This was a Homeless One House's Patreon sock for January so the color is Daydreamer which you can no longer get. It's a one of a kind and then this purple is Amethyst which you can't get from her website. And yeah, that's basically this. It's a vanilla sock and just kind of lives in my backpack to keep me sane if I ever have to wait anywhere. This is the label too. Really fun and sparkly. Yeah. And this, of course, my go-to knitting bag for my backpack is my Knit One So Two bag that you can put on your wrist and take with you. And then I have started my April Does It Vista Dye Work socks. This is living in a stolen minutes bag. I love the size of these. These are perfect for socks. Um, so I am knitting the RWS Society socks by Hooga Canyon. I am doing this for the does it visit Iwerks 8th annual knitted sock along and I'm also double dipping into the sock knitters anonymous group on Ravelry where this month is to do a pattern that is underappreciated so there's a couple of qualifications like it has to be published before January of 2022 and have less than 15 projects so this one only had 12 and I was like, well, that is underappreciated. We need to show that off. So this is where we're at. And since I'm doing, I'm using my sock blank yarn, I thought it would be fun to do this pattern instead of a self-striping sock. I have done the leg though. I've done two and a half pattern repeats. And then I have done another slip stitch heel flap. Who am I? I've just been like, oh, heel flaps, great. Usually I'm like, ugh, heel flap. I just, I've been loving it lately. It just looks so good. And I love, yes, I love how this looks. So I have picked up my gusset stitches and now we are in gusset decrease land. I am really enjoying watching how these colors are changing throughout. I think it's really fun. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this pattern is so easy to memorize. Once you get like the foundation set up, I no longer need to reference the pattern. It's just really easy to read the knitting and memorize the pattern. So very easy to pick up and put down. I love them using my nine inch circulars. US zero, 56 stitches, 
And then here is a view of the yarn left over. So this was a sock blank from Desert Vista Dye Works for doing all 12 months last year. And this is what it looks like before you knit any of it. So two matching socks because it was a double stranded sock blank. And it is kind of crinkly, which is why some of my stitches in here look a little, like especially in the cup you can see, like they look a little wonky, but it's just because they have a little kink in them. But when I block them out, everything should just relax. But yeah, I love the Stolen Minutes bag because both of these can fit in really easily just along the bottom. I could be doing both socks in here at the same time. And the stripes, like look at them. But we're just doing one at a time. And it all just fits in here really nicely. I have one more work in progress to share with you guys. I've been working a lot more on my granny square blanket, which I started a while ago for Shane's mom. And I am determined to finish this. So I have added a couple more squares since I've last shown you. It is going to be a seven by seven granny square blanket. So I've done five rows here and I'm working on the sixth row. I'll give you a close up of some of the newest colors. So all of these colors are from Nora George's Harry Potter Blanket Club, which is no longer going on, I believe. And I'm using 10 grams-ish of each of the minis. They all came as 20 grams, and I think each square takes about eight, seven to eight. I have two more rows to go. I'm loving how this looks. It is a really nice size. And the goal is for it to be a lap blanket and like I can sit it on my crisscrossed legs really nicely and I love it. His family is coming to visit very soon and I want to get this done before they come. If not, just before they leave. That's the goal. Have it done to send it back with her. So yeah, I've been working on this a lot more. The goal lately for me has been to do two squares a day, which is really hard <laughs> for me to stick to. Yeah, it's not easy. I have done, like this square is ready to be joined in. So it's just sitting and waiting. So I can kind of take these with me and like do a square and get it to this point and then when I come home at night, I can add the squares in. All my yarns are kind of living in this join the stitches bag. I have some that are kicked up, which you can see in here. And then like this mini set, I have to still wind off to be able to make. So I just wind them up into the little cakes. And then I am using a three and a half millimeter crochet hook. I am using basically TLC yarn crafts videos on how to make a granny square and how to join as you go. Because what I do is when they're at this point, I've done them separately. And then the next round, I chain them together. So that way they're physically attached and I don't have any seaming minus the two ends from the beginning and end of each square to seam in, which has been working really well. I definitely will do this again. I already have plans on making myself a granny square blanket with my a homespun house minis that come every month because those are 10 grams. And I was like, well, this will be perfect for that. And I love how it looks. I love a good granny square. I think it's eight rounds total. Each edge stitch that I'm finishing with is eight clusters, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, seven clusters on each edge. So, because you can't do another round. I did the biggest round possible for 10 grams. And yeah, so that's this. I'm really loving it. I love how it looks. 
Each square takes me about 40 minutes to do. Um, I was working on that a lot for like scrappy Sundays and then kind of fell off with our move here to Denver. But now I'm trying to like power through to get that done to send with his mom after they come visit us and you know, to start a new one for myself. Which that one I think we get three minis a month and if I can just do a square each Sunday of the month, you know, I can keep up. <laughs> Instead of this one where it was like, I mean, it was like five a month, but I started the blanket after I'd gotten all of the months and it was just a con continuous thing. I need more concrete goals for myself. Like I'm going to crochet my three squares this month. Each square only takes like 40 minutes each, um, 40 minutes to an hour. So, you know, that's three hours in the month. That's not bad. But yeah, that's all of the knitting that I have to share. Um, over the past two weeks, you know, not a lot has happened. The most exciting things were I got a haircut and I got my nose pierced, which is very exciting. Um, like I mentioned, Shane's family is coming to visit, so I'll probably be taking a week off. I will be taking a week off of work. Um, and we're just going to go explore Denver a little bit, something we haven't really had the chance to do. We're going to go on a hike, go to like Garden of the Gods, um, just a lot of exploring and relaxing, a lot of making time, hopefully. And yeah, not much else has happened, you know, just doing the normal, going to work, coming home, knitting when you can, working out, going on walks, walking the dog, that kind of fun stuff. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. If you liked the video, please feel free to leave a, a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Tell me what you're working on. Are you enjoying the nice weather? Is it getting nice where you are? Or are you having the same weird spring indecision like we're having? I'd love to know. Thank you guys so much for your love. And as always, thank you for clicking. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you again very soon. Okay, we're gonna take a sip of water. Look at him sleeping. He's so cute. Finished a pair of, oh, what are they called? I have one more work in projects. Work in, blah, blah, blah. 